getting started finding your idea. Now, first of all, if you want to be an entrepreneur, what we're saying is that you want to set up your own business. And what is a business? Well, essentially, it's a company that offers a product or a service or several. So how do you find that product or service that you would like to create, you'd like to build? Um, well, my advice is, first of all, scratch your own itch, then check for competitors, then validate your concept, then size up your barriers. And through this process, you'll be able to work out whether your idea is a good idea or not. And you may need to have several ideas until you hatch upon one that passes all of the criteria. So what do I mean by this? Scratch your own itch. This is not just my advice. There are lots of people who have been through the entrepreneurial journey that will give this advice. It really works. You have had a unique set of life experiences. Your life will be slightly different to everybody else's. And you may well have found something that is just really annoying that you can see needs fixing. You know, something that really bothers you that you wish existed. That is often a very good starting point. So in my case, uh, I'm, I'm a doctor. And years ago, I was a junior doctor. I was working on wards. And I saw lots of patients suffer harm because we couldn't access certain test results or, or we couldn't read somebody else's handwriting so we didn't know what the care plan was or uh, a critically abnormal result wasn't communicated to uh, us clearly and so people didn't take uh, action in a reasonable amount of time. And it was also colossally inefficient. I, was, I would spend hours in the middle of the night on a night shift rewriting drugs charts where I would literally have a paper booklet, which was a blank drugs card, um, the existing drugs chart that had run out of space. Sometimes there'll be a little extra column created by people signing in the margins. And I would just copy the medications down. And I would do that for perhaps 10, 15 different drugs charts at a time. And, you know, this was very wasteful, but also dangerous because every time I've copied something, I especially since it's the middle of the night, I could potentially cause an error. Um, there was an opportunity for a transcription error to happen. So I realized that the best way around this was to set up a computerized system that looked and felt like the paper it, it, that, that we were using on the wards, but was digital. So I had all these bits built in and I had drugs charts with an infinite number of columns to sign off each dose. So that was the itch that I scratched of my own. So think about something in your life that something you wish existed but doesn't or something that um, a service that exists but is really quite terrible and you, you wish it could be better. Um, and for inspiration, if you have a look on Y Combinator online and search for um, 100 business ideas, they put lists of just ideas that they've come up with that they would or things we would like to see, um, lists of ideas that they have come up with. The thing is, is ideas are relatively cheap, but it's knowing which ideas are the good ones that, uh, and then executing on them is where the value is. So scratch your own itch. So then having identified something that you would like to, a product or a service that you want to build or you want to create and do better, um, check for competitors. This shouldn't be difficult because if a competitor is worth its salt, they should be fairly easy to discover. Now, there is a bit of a difference between a business to business company. So that's a uh, if you're trying to if you're making a product or a service and you're selling it to other businesses, um, that's a business to business company. Whereas if you're making uh, so examples of these might be um, if you are uh, Microsoft and you are selling the their online cloud platform called Azure, um, for companies to be able to manage their internal databases or something, that's a business-to-business -business thing. 
Now, business to consumer is the other category where this is companies that are selling things to you and me, individuals. Uh, and that's more like your smartphone company, like Apple, selling you an iPhone. So generally speaking, it's easier to discover business to consumer businesses because they're going to be aimed at people like you. Um, whereas business to business, you should still be able to find them online by Googling. You just might have to look a little bit harder, get into um, forums that are uh, uh, of, of that type of, of business that's being sold to, uh, to find these. But the point is, is you need to check for them because it doesn't take long. The good ones will easily be discoverable. And you might find that someone is already doing exactly what you wanted in a way that you, it's actually quite good and you just hadn't you weren't aware of them in which case you may if you're scratching your, your own itch you might want to become a customer of them or you might want to encourage your employer to become a customer of them but very often you will find that there are companies there and that's no disaster but they're doing such a pig-eared job of it that you could do it so much better and these are often companies that have been around for many, many years that have got dated processes that haven't kept up with the times. And if the if, if it's very difficult for customers to use them or if the results are mediocre, there's opportunity there for you to step in. So when you check for competitors, really, you're asking yourself the question, are other people doing it? And if so, are they doing it in a way that is good enough or better than what I would be able to do? Because if the answer is yes, find a different idea because you probably don't want to be competing in a saturated market. But if the answer is no, or there's not very many, or the way they're all doing it, but they're all not very good, that is an opportunity there. That's a an area where you could definitely um, consider spinning up a business. So the next idea is validate the concept. And this is especially important in areas where perhaps there aren't very many or any competitors. Because it's all very well there being a, a gap in the market. It's all very well you having identified a, a new widget that you want to sell or there's a new service that you think would be really important. But if there's not a market in the gap, if there are not people or, that want to buy it, you're wasting your time. And in fact... The majority of Silicon Valley startups that fail, fail because they've built something that nobody else wants. So this is why it's really important to validate the concept. Now, if you pick up a book called The Lean Startup by Eric Ries, this book is all about the idea of testing your concept and or validating your concept. And so what you need to do essentially is you need to say, okay, you've dreamt up a, a product or a business that you'd like to, a product or a service that you'd like to create. You've dreamt, dreamt up a thing that you'd like your business to do. You've checked for competitors to see are there other people doing it in a satisfactory way? And let's say the answer is no. Uh, and then you need to validate the concept, which is are there people who would actually be willing to pay and pay you for your thing if only you built it? And that's what we mean by validate the concept. Now, the ultimate way of doing this is to essentially find a prospective customer. It's to go chatting to someone or various people in who, who you would think would be your customers and ask them. Just bear in mind that some people will be uh, will, will humor you. They, they, they might be unduly positive, especially people who are close to you, friends and family. Um, so you want to make sure you're getting an honest picture and you may have to sample and speak to lots of or several people um, to get an absolute steer. And some concepts are straightforward. So the idea of um, I want to create a telephone that has got a screen and is a computer, um, you can make calls on it, but you can also access the internet, i.e. a smartphone, is now pretty concrete and most people will get it from a description. But some other things are a bit more abstract, especially if you're selling something like, I don't know, a uh, approach to optimize the way you and your friends um, commute to work via carpooling. It, it might need a bit more illustration. So you may find that you have to do little things like um, sketch a wireframe on a, on a bit of paper or mock up a little 
cardboard construction just to give the person who you're trying to validate it with the idea with a clear enough steer. But if you can get to the position of there's somebody who is uh, the type of person that you would sell to saying, yes, I'll be willing to put down money um, for you to give me that product or service, then you've validated it. You know there is at least some degree of market there. And then finally, size up the barrier. So let's say you've, ident you've come up with the, the product service that you want, you really want by scratching your own itch. You realize there's something that really annoys you about life and you, you want to do something about it. And you've checked to see if there's any competitors out there and there are either no competitors or all the ones that exist are doing a rubbish job at it. And then you've tested your idea with um, prospective buyers and they've said, yeah, we've had a look around. The people who are out there, they're rubbish. Um, but what you're proposing to do, we would love to buy that. Hurry up and build it. And the final bit is look at the barrier. What's it, what are you going to have to overcome to be able to build this? Because in some markets this is a very high barrier. So in the world of financial services, for instance, you will often have to get certain regulatory registration and that regulatory registration may come with additional requirements like you need to have a uh, special bank account with so much money in it to act as, as insurance or whatever or as an SRO. Um, so, so that if things go wrong, your customers don't lose out, for instance. Um, and generally, the barriers fall into two domains. Regulatory, which are like absolute rules and laws that, that you have to uh, comply by. They're often things like getting a registration, sending off a pack of compliance information and, and getting some sort of license. And there's often money involved. You often have to pay for that. Um, sometimes it's just a paperwork exercise and we have to wonder what benefits delivering, but, but sometimes it's more than that. Um, and that can, it can be quite costly for medical device. For instance, you probably have to, in the UK, get MHRA approval, um, such that it's safe to use on patients. And that can be very expensive. You can require lab data, lots of things. So that's a very important barrier. So the barriers will either fall into the regulatory domain or they will fall into the sort of the approval domain of what would a customer what does a customer need to be satisfied of before they will buy? Now, when it comes to the approval domain, these are sorts of things where you may find that um, your customer is not willing to buy from a startup. Um, let's say you're, you're selling a mission critical piece of software. So let's say you're selling a, a bookkeeping software for accountants, let's say. And this is what they're going to be running their life on. Well, they might not be willing to trust a startup and certainly be the first customer on the software because, well, what if it goes wrong? And that's not, that's not, these aren't barriers that you can't overcome. The whole point is, is they are a barrier, but you can get over them. It's just that it's going to take extra work to get there. And you may have to come up with workarounds. And the higher these barriers are, the more investment of your time and potentially money you will have to put in to, to get to a point where your business is able to sell. And there are some areas where it's, it's uh, like the gold rush. It's, it's open season. There, there, there is no regulatory stuff on there. So I, I like to think of when drones first came out. Anyone could sell a drone. Anyone could fly a drone. Now there's regulation on, uh, there's licensing for flying drones in, in lots of areas. And uh, for a drone to be licensable, it has to meet certain criteria. So, you know, a bit of regulation there. Um, but then there's other areas where you will find there is regulation and there are approval barriers. Now, in my case, one thing we quickly found was that you'd have a hospital that was running almost everything on paper. Um, now, in the UK, we have the NHS is the operator of the majority of hospital beds in, in the country. Um, but when we approached them, um, we would then find or we would then hear words like, oh, you're too small to possibly supply us, even though we might be talking to a hospital that had 300 beds in. The idea that a small company would be able to even provide any form of acceptable service to a 
uh, organization which has hundreds of beds and multiple millions of pounds of turnover that they found was was laughable and unacceptable. They needed to see that the proof that we'd done it before, um, before they'd believe us. So that was a very significant barrier for us, how we gained the trust of hospitals to prove that our software was stable, was safe, worked. And you could argue to you blue in the face that, well, look, here's all the problems with paper and this is what our software does. But the objection was your company's too small. Um, so that was a significant barrier. And I think if, um, if, if I'd gone and properly sized up the barrier at the start and realized how big it was, I may have made different decisions as to who I would have aimed the product at and therefore how I would have designed it. So they're the things that you need to do when it comes to finding ideas. Ideas are cheap. It's the uh, verification of them and the execution of them that makes them valuable. But to get uh, work out what idea should become your business and should end up basically being your life's obsession for several years because that's what's going to happen, you want to start off by scratching your own itch, you know, find something that you're unhappy about in life and that you think could be done better, check for competitors, do they exist? And if they exist, are they actually doing a good job? Because if not, green light, validate your concept. Are there people out there that will be willing to buy your product or service from you if only it existed and then finally size up the barrier what regulation are you going to have to overcome to be able to supply create to build supply create this product or service and what sorts of things might you have to prove to a customer uh, or prospective customer before they'd be ready to buy from you and the ideal business ideas are the ones that that solve a problem for you don't have many competitors or any competitors doing it properly where there's definitely a customer who wants to buy and the barrier to entry is relatively low.